I ate the most popular protein bar in the world, and this is what happened. Not the Quest Bar, not the RX Bar, not even the Cliff Bar. When I did a Google search, the number one consumed protein bar that I came up with was the Kind Bar. And more specifically, the Peanut Butter Dark Chocolate Kind Bar. Hi, I'm Dr. Derek Alessi, the High Octane Dad, helping to unlock the superhuman potential inside every father. And 44.5 million Americans per year eat some type of protein bar. In fact, they're widely consumed for a number of reasons. They're portable, they're good tasting, they're convenient, and a lot of people believe that it's better nutrition than a candy bar or any ordinary snack. Now, is that the case? Let's find out. First, when we take a look at the label, it sounds pretty good. Seven grams of protein, 52% nuts. It's gluten-free, low glycemic index, dairy-free, no genetically engineered ingredients, no sugar alcohol, very low sodium, zero trans fats, and a good source of fiber. Boy, that sounds pretty good, but now let's take a look at the ingredient list. Ingredient lists are peanuts, glucose syrup, sugar, honey, and palm kernel oil. Doesn't sound as low glycemic as I had hoped. Almonds, peanut butter, peanuts, sea salt, soy protein isolates, unsweetened chocolate, alkalized cocoa, chicory root, fiber, soy, lecithin, tapioca starch, sea salt, natural flavors, and cocoa butter. Glucose, sugar, and honey. Those are three of the top four ingredients. And keep in mind, when you're looking at a nutritional label, it's going to be in order of abundance, so those are in there the most. Now, a lot of those ingredients don't exactly sound low glycemic to me, like the label suggests. However, there is no use in guessing. Why don't we use our continuing monitoring glucose device and find out for sure. So before we really start, I'm going to get a baseline blood glucose reading. Okay, so I am 88. Let's eat the bar and see if we have much change and much insulin release. It's been just over 10 minutes since I had the Kind Bar. Let's take a look at the blood glucose level now. <clears throat> 88. It was 88 before, it's still 88 now. 10 minutes in, hey, not bad, there really is no change. Let's keep watching. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes since I had the Kind Bar. Let's take a look at the glucose. Ninety-eight. So I jumped a little bit on this one up about 10 points or so. Let's keep watching. Okay, now it's almost 30 minutes since I had the Kind Bar. Let's take a look at my glucose. Okay, 104. So I've continued to go up starting at 88, went to 98, now 104. So we're seeing the lift. Okay, so now about 45 minutes since I had the Kind Bar. Let's take a look. And glucose 101, producing some insulin, so it begins. I'm going to start pushing my blood sugar back down, and soon it will be back into the 90s and into the 80s, so I am producing some insulin. So what does all this mean? Well, it means this, that my blood sugar did go up. Was it low glycemic? Well, I guess that's who you ask. Some people are pretty happy if their blood sugar moves by 20 points, some people 30, 40. It all kind of depends on your goal. For a lot of my clients, I'm looking for stabilization as much as possible, and if your blood sugar doesn't move by more than five, maybe 10 points, even better. On a side note, I did this test two days in a row. The very first day, I changed 36 points of blood sugar. Today, 16. What's the difference? Hard to tell other than different timing during the day. And secondly, you never really know what you have in your belly, so you don't know how much you're getting buffered. Please remember to like and subscribe to this video down below because I want to keep making content that's important to you. I'm Dr. Derek Alessi, the High Octane Dad, helping to unlock the superhuman potential inside every father.